Hello, hello, welcome in. My name is CJ, welcome to the channel. Sit down, strap in, this is a wild one. Today we're gonna be talking about candy, yay! Well, I guess the lack of candy in this situation. Recently, there was a Willy Wonka fiasco in Glasgow, Scotland that had parents outraged, kids crying, and the police called, which is a pretty wild chain of events in my opinion for something that's supposed to be about chocolate. So what the hell happened, you might be wondering? Well, with the recent release of the Wonka movie starring the Gen Z heartthrob and Mew Master himself, Timothy Shalamander, who looks like the pre-evolution of Jacob Elordi in my opinion, a Scottish entrepreneur named Billy Cowell, Cole, Coal, I don't know how the fuck to say that, but uh, it's probably Cole because that's what he's gonna get for Christmas because he's been a bad boy. Anyways, Billiam Cole decided to take advantage of the Wonka craze and open up what was called a Wonka experience or something like that for the low, low price of 35 euro, which included real life Oompa Loompas and everything. Or so you thought. The whole event took place in an abandoned warehouse in Glasgow, Scotland that looks like a meth lab converted into an even lower quality high school drama class rendition of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. You may have seen this picture of the sad Oompa Loompa. It's been going around online. It's kind of become a viral meme as of late. And that is, uh, that's straight up meth making material. And it looks like the Oompa Loompa has been partaking in the rock candy a little bit, if you know what I mean. But honestly, this picture just makes me sad. I feel like it perfectly captures the whole event if you showed this image to somebody and gave them no context to what they're looking at, they would be so confused. But it's actually a $50 million art piece called Sad Oompa Loompa. I guess, uh, or it could have just been an AI image generated with the prompt of Oompa Loompa doing drugs in a warehouse. Anyways, here's some of the images that the event advertised that the event would look like. And here's what the event actually looked like. As you can tell, they used a lot of AI to create the event and, and for the promotion of the event, but looks like they used a little bit too much A and not enough I, but it ended in an OU money. It was a vowels joke. Pretty spot on if you ask me. So I was able to find a video that some parent took inside of the event and it looks like the most half-assed, low effort, Home Depot decoration sale slaughterhouse. These pipes and stuff, this this just looks like a shitty Mario movie remake. I don't know if they try to do like a cosplay within a warehouse or something. And then it looks like back here, there's just like random math equations or something written on the wall. I understand you have to have like recipes for like making chocolate and stuff, but uh, last I checked, I don't think it involves algebra and stuff like that. I saw a lot of people online were talking about, there was, there was this was one single bouncy castle in the entire event that looks, I mean, you could see just from the distance, this person's like almost covering a, a third of the entire thing. So I'd imagine you could fit like three kids in there. Just seems like a blatant scam that went on. Oh God. What a waste of money. What, what is all this like smoke in the air? I don't, I don't know, is someone like vaping around there? You know, really adds to the do drugs and hang out in the warehouse kind of vibe that this whole thing carries. Then we have an Oompa Loompa coming up. I think it's, they're gonna solicit drugs to this child. Oh wow, handing out candy. Oh no, <laughs> oh my God. This looks like they just blew up an image of a chocolate Pop-Tart and then just laid it on the bottom of this. You couldn't even be like bothered to figure out how to fill this with like actual liquid or something like that. They just have like dandruff sprinkles in there. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure abomination. I think that's how the song went or something like that. So obviously like any live event, you have to put out promotion for it. Uh, they made a website, every, every, all the basic stuff you do to advertise an event. Uh, and this is the AI generated post on the website for the event before it was taken down. And they, uh, they clearly used a lot of AI to generate the image, but this just looks like they hired maybe someone who has never used AI before on like Fiverr or something. But at least they nailed, you know, the banner on here. 
and Trinring Entertainment, including things like Katga Catting and Karchi Tons, Exaster's Dre Lollipops, and a Pasadice of Sweet Teats. I have no idea what a Karchi Ton is, but I can't wait to find out. Honestly, the first time I, I saw this, I thought like my dyslexia was going haywire, but no, it's just normal wire up there. This is what they put out for the event. Like this, they sent this out. They thought this was good. Didn't even proofread the AI or like attempt to change anything. They were like, fuck it, we'll do it live. Or maybe maybe their dyslexia was so bad that they just didn't even notice it. I doubt that though, because as you'll see, uh, Bill Word Cole isn't exactly the most thorough guy. <laughs> Actually, speaking of... Billy himself. Uh, when I was researching this video, I discovered that Billy is a pretty big user of AI, so much so that he actually sells AI written books all over Amazon. He, he doesn't write them at all. He, he just goes into chat GPT and puts in a prompt uh, like, write me a book like the Da Vinci Code and then copies it pastes it into Microsoft Word and then just like sends it to a publisher. Uh, but I found this article that describes some of the accusations and they're pretty funny. The 16 books on Cole's Amazon author page were all published in the summer of 2023. So he published 16 books in one summer. Some of them, it even says on the very same day. That's insane. Not that like it's an impressive feat or anything like that. Did he think that he was going to get away with it? Like if these books became popular, was no one going to notice that these were all published within like three months of each other? <laughs> the synopsis for each is AI generated according to GPT-0 analysis. And so is the text between the covers as one irate reviewer has complained. Cool. So they're terrible, I take it. <laughs> Do you think they meant like irate, like angry, or is the reviewer just describing like what they're doing? <laughs> I rate this poorly. Cole couldn't even be bothered to pen his own author bio, which declares him as a rising star in the literary world who weaves spellbinding tales that delve into the mysterious realms of fictional thrillers and gripping conspiracies. Wow, a, a rising star in the literary world. And you can tell that this part's true because I found this Instagram post by him where he's advertising his book, and look, it got three likes. I'm not an expert on becoming a rising star, but uh, I think you're going to need some more zeros at the end of that to call yourself a rising star. Well, I guess he didn't call himself a rising star. ChatGPT did. This guy's literally Brian from Family Guy putting out literary work that he didn't write, and I guess it's not technically plagiarizing, but it's still scummy. Clearly, he just wants all of the applause for the work he isn't capable of doing. I mean, at least if you write a book and it sucks, you can still say, like, you wrote a book. You know, that's a difficult task. But if you lie about writing a book and it sucks, I don't know, maybe just quit. And if that wasn't bad enough, his book Operation Inoculation is a paranoid right-wing political novel described as a conspiratorial journey into vaccination truth. I can't even imagine what AI writes about anti-vaxxer conspiracies. <laughs> I feel like it just goes off the grid and starts talking about how like Harry Potter's an anti-vaxxer or something like that. Actually knowing JK Rowling's agenda, I wouldn't really be surprised by that. Also, if you didn't know her pen name is JK Rowling so that you know that her books are fiction. Cause when you're done reading it, it says, just kidding. Anyways, back to the Wonka fiasco. The event went as far as to hire actors to play all the characters within Wonka's Chocolate Factory, but I saw this post with an interview of the person who played that sad Oompa Loompa, and they stated that the acting positions were listed on Indeed and said, I don't normally get my acting jobs through Indeed. To be honest, it seemed a wee bit skeptical because it wasn't through an agency. Uh, yeah, that, that is sketchy. It's basically a nicer version of a Craigslist posting asking you to be an actor in like a kid's show. <laughs> but Billy was persistent. All of these actors were casted into an AI-generated gibberish script that makes uh, absolutely no sense and pretty much turns it into like a real-life horror parody of Wonka, uh, as explained by the guy who played Wonka, Paul Connell. And they were also only given like a day to memorize the script. I got cast as the part on the Thursday, was told that I needed to learn the script for the Friday. So I said, no problem, send it over. The script was 15 pages monologue of AI generated gibberish. Fortunately though, through my professional internet sleuthing skills, I was able to find the script online. So I'm gonna read you some of my favorite parts. So here's the cover page of the script and apparently the show was called Willie's Chocolate Experience, which makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable because it kind of sounds like a 
racist description of like a white guy's first experience sleeping with a black woman. <laughs> and then on the first page of the script, you can see that Wonka is actually named Willie McDuff and the Oompa Loompas are called Wonka Doodles, which sounds like an exotic dog breed. And Wonka isn't used in the entire script, so I'm not sure why they call them Wonka Doodles. I would imagine this was probably for like copyright issues or maybe because the AI just wrote it that way. So just to give you like a sense of the uh, the jokes written into this, this is on the second page of the script. It says, Splendid! And who has packed an extra pair of socks? You know, in case the first pair gets knocked off by sheer amazement. This is a great example of AI trying to write a shitty joke. Much like the whole script, this is one of those jokes that's just gonna draw awkward silence. And then they have the audacity to write in that the audience laughs and raises their hands. Bold assumption. Uh, one of my other favorites, this isn't a line from it, but it's uh, like description of what's happening. And it says, audience members are encouraged to move around and interact with the set pieces, including the giggle grass. So they're for sure just growing weed here, right? <laughs> Does that not just like confirm our assumptions that this is like a drug den warehouse? So what's normal within script writing is they'll describe the scene in like the stationary area or whatever is going on. And this one describes a twilight tunnel, which the play describes it as the vibrant colors and whimsical laughter of the Garden of Enchantment gradually give way to a more subdued atmosphere. The path narrows and the light dims leading to the entrance of the twilight tunnel. This tunnel sounds like pretty rad, but unfortunately here is what it looked like at the actual event. Really, the only vision for the entire event is what AI generated within the script, and they just tried to bring that to light. But rather than removing the parts that they couldn't realistically accomplish, they just kind of half-ass attempted it and then just called it a day. And on this page, it brings in something that I have no idea what it is. It describes it as the anti-graffiti gobstopper. I have no idea what's even happening in this. We went to literally just went to the next page. Anti-graffiti gobstopper. Why is it called that? I, I've read through this script. There's nowhere else in the story that it mentions graffiti. Um, they also use gobstopper, which I think is a copyrighted name. It go and it goes on to describe it as a marvel of confectionery science designed to aid, oh, not just any soul, but the tireless guardians of cleanliness, our beloved mums. Is that not kind of misogynistic? <laughs> You're kind of like only giving the role to women, to moms, as the tireless guardians of cleanliness. And then within this page, there's just a random villain that's introduced called the Unknown. And they, they describe him as an evil chocolate maker that lives in the walls. Is he evil? Is the chocolate evil? It do, it's not really clear on that. We have some crazy chocolate maker who's frogging in a candy factory. And if you don't know what frogging is, I'll put like a brief description down here somewhere, but it is terrifying and it's something that actually happens. ChatGPT went crazy on this. It's one thing to like introduce a villain into a story, but this guy sounds like a mentally unstable psychopath. The unknown with a voice both smooth and sinister. Ah, oh, really Macduff and his band of interpret explorers. You have something I desire and with your unwitting aid, it shall be mine. The anti-graffiti gobstopper will no longer clean your worlds. It will turn them to chaos at my command. And then he just kind of points at a random kid in the audience and he's like, You there! Yes, you will assist me in my evil plan. Together we shall rewrite the cleanliness and order. I don't know what that means, but it sounds creepy. And why do you need a kid to do that? And I also found a video that has the unknown in it and him in action they they dressed him up in all black with a scary reflective mask and it terrified the kids <laughs> so i could go on about this script and how little sense it makes and how stupid it is but um i got to this page i was reading through and um I'm just gonna read it for you, and we can all bask in how weird this is together. This is Willie McDuff speaking, and he's saying, And let's not forget our secret inventions. The soup-flavored jelly beans designed to keep the wee ones clean. Hot and spicy beans that... Attract the 
birds? That's a story for another day or perhaps a question for your parents. What the fuck? <laughs> Soup flavored jelly beans to keep the wee ones clean and spicy jelly beans that this is a euphemism for boner pills, right? Oh my God. And then they wrote in that the audience will chuckle appreciating the playful innuendo. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is supposed to be a kid's show. Why are we throwing spicy beans that make you aroused into this? Anyways, this script makes no sense, and then the AI wrote in lines for the audience. Not really sure how they expect the audience to know those lines, but it's also hilarious because now people are paying money to go to this scam event, and also then to be a part of the show. What if they like pause in the middle of the script for like the audience member to say their line and then they don't so they just like get super pissed and the whole thing falls apart. I guess for some reason the audience is supposed to say the line of it's like dinner in a dessert. Astonishing. And then another guest is supposed to say oh wow it's oddly gorgeous. How is that possible? Also they're eating something called the boogerberry bean? What are we feeding these kids exactly? And the other kids eating a soup flavored jelly bean? I fucking hate soup. So if someone gave me a jelly bean that was flavored as a soup, I'd probably just slap them right in the face. Well, anyways, the script sucked. The event looked even worse, but at least the kids got chocolate, right? <laughs> no. The truly, truly saddest part of this entire event is that attendees reported that the only candy they received was one single jelly bean and a quarter glass of lemonade. One jelly bean? That is absurd. I can't even imagine the level of overwhelming disappointment that the kids receive when they put their hand out and receive one stinking jelly bean. Take it. Take it and like it. And I thought this was supposed to be a chocolate factory, so why'd they go with jelly beans? It's such a low-tier candy, too. It's just cruel, though. Kids love candy. That's why they use it as bait to get them to go into the van. All jokes aside, I can't imagine what it must feel like being like a, a hardworking parent. You spend 35 bucks per person only to discover it's basically just a scam. On top of all this, Paul goes on talking about the script in his video, explaining that there's portions that were clearly impossible to recreate. And then when he brought it up to the event coordinators, they were like, I don't know, improv it. God, being a struggling actor has got to be one of the worst jobs. I mean, it's their choice, but you're still basically just nothing to casting directors and agencies. I'll tell you a quick little story time. I grew up in Los Angeles, so at one point I had a short period where I made a go at it of acting and auditioned for some shows and some movies and stuff like that. And it is hard to put into words the level of belittling that you feel and experience at an audition. And on set, I've experienced the exact same thing that Paul's talking about where, you know, you get asked to do something that's completely impossible. I was on a set for a show on uh, ID or Investigation Discovery and I was playing the big role of Fireman Number 2. The director told me he wanted me to pick up the victim and then go running out of the house because I was a big, strong fireman. Um, but the person playing the victim was not on set that day. So then I told the director that and he was like, find someone who can fill in or improvise something. I have no idea how to accomplish that. So instead, I just went and found the assistant director, told them, and then he said, that's not even on our shot list. Then the two directors started violently arguing. Uh, I stood there awkwardly. They called the day a wrap, and then I went home. Anyways, uh, in Paul's video, he explains that on the day of the event, all the actors showed up. They acknowledged the absolute atrocity and the fact that they were more than likely not going to get paid, but they decided to do it anyways, to put it on for you know, the families and, and the children. How sweet. And if all of this wasn't enough, Paul also explains that the actors were overworked and didn't get a break for more than four hours or so after playing all of their respective roles. I would imagine the other workers were just watching Paul and they're like, Paul has lost his mind. He had one too many lemonades and jelly bean and now he's insane. And then they just tried to like herd him away to like take a break, maybe on like a gurney or something. But it doesn't end there. Paul goes on even further to explain that after his break and returning to his line of duty like a good soldier, he was told to hide because mayhem had broken out and people were running around screaming, breaking things, stealing things, and ultimately the police were called. I can't even believe this whole situation is real, honestly. The whole thing sounds like the intro to like a Goosebumps novel about a chocolate factory that makes their chocolate out of captured kids or something like that. Actually, I think that's just the premise to Willy Wonka. <laughs> But this is where the story takes 
a very dark turn. I do feel it's important to say this, so I'm going to give a little trigger warning for grooming and PDF file stuff coming up in the next part of this. So if you want to avoid that, just skip down to the time right here. That was your last warning. So as I was researching and scripting this video, I came across an accusation and some evidence that just makes the whole situation even worse, if that was possible. So after the virality of the whole event and the large support of Paul's videos explaining the event, I found a video that was posted explaining an alleged darker background of Paul. Now, I need to reiterate before moving forward, this is all alleged, and as far as I'm aware, there has been no other proof or evidence that's been released or anything else coming forward. But according to a TikTok that was posted after Paul went viral, when he was 22 years old, he had been involved in a relationship with a 16 year old student of his while he was a teacher at a drama school. Now, it is important to note that in their respective country, the age of consent is 16, but dating a student is illegal and gross. And to abuse the role to turn it into something romantic or sexual is just disgusting. Also, they're still a child, so what the fuck is wrong with you? Now, they go on to explain that Paul wouldn't allow their relationship to be public until they were 17 because it was, quote, weird. Good. I, I'm glad you're aware of that. Um, but ultimately, the situation caused this person to be expelled from the school they were attending. Again, this is all alleged, but if Paul knew it was weird, and his friends were making jokes about it, it just seems like you're acknowledging how bad it is and then continuing to participate in it, allegedly. And apparently this wasn't like a short little fling either, not that that would make it better, but they claim that they were together with Paul for around like five years. Yeah, that that is gross. It is wildly disgusting to think that he was her teacher, someone who's supposed to be a mentor and, and provide guidance, not guidance to the bedroom. Allegedly. Now, first of all, I just want to begin and say that I can't even imagine what it feels like to see the person that caused so much trauma in your life then propped up as like the good guy in all of this uh, and everything going on. And if what they're claiming happened is true, it is absolutely awful and terrible and repulsive. And I wish the absolute best for them in recovery and, and growth from all of this. But the situation Paul has found himself in is quite Interesting, allegedly. If all of this is true, then Paul was thrusted into the spotlight and painted as the good guy for playing the role of Wonka in a, a candy maker who invites kids to his chocolate factory where in the original version, let's be honest, the kids die, or at least they're never heard of a, from again. And then after the fact, he's being accused of grooming. This could be the most poetic act of karma ever. Oh, and who is this event for again? Oh yeah, children. Like I said, all of this is alleged and I'll let you use your best judgment to figure out where you stand in all of this. But if what is being brought to light is true, then this clip of Paul is terrible and hilarious. And children are going to be coming through. But let's just stick around. Let's do our best to make sure that the children have some kind of experience. Oof. And not to mention that his character is the one in the script with that line about the spicy bean. It's just not a great look. Once again, all of this is alleged. And please do not go hating on anyone from this video. That is the last thing that is needed, and that's not my intention at all. The initial person who posted the accusations already had to deactivate their account and shut everything down because they were getting so much backlash and hate and... That's just disgusting. I'm not trying to point fingers or, or make any accusations in this. The only person I'm pointing the finger at is Billy Cole, who is the one who organized all of this and completely scammed people out of money. Speaking of Billy, after the event backlash, she had some choice words to say, an apology, if you will. So here's what his words were. The creator of the Willy Wonka experience has issued an apology. I'm really shocked. The event had fallen short of the expectations of people on paper. My visions of the artistic rendition rendition of a well-known book didn't come to fruition. Calling this an artistic rendition is pretty wild. I don't think there was a single thing artistic about this whole event. Or maybe he's calling it artistic because he's a scam artist. And you were surprised by what? How many people showed up? Because he had to issue a refund to 850 ticket buyers. Which, first of all, 
good. But 850 people, that, that's a lot of people. That's no small amount, and it's definitely not a small chunk of change. That's over like 29,000 euro. And obviously we can tell that it was all 100% profit because he cut every single corner possible. Honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised if the whole apology was AI generated. Also, his company is called House of Illuminati. So, you know, that's cringe. Anyways... Initially, when I had heard about this event, I just thought it was goofy, and I started scripting a video immediately, and this video would have been much shorter and come out way earlier, but the more that I researched, the more that just kept coming out in the event, and then it turned into this, and just it's like pulling a thread that just never stops exposing more and more. All in all, I hope the ticket buyers get their money back because they were scammed, all the wrongs are corrected, and for the love of God, just give the kids some proper candy. But that's gonna be it for this video. Hit the like button if you liked the video. Subscribe for some more videos. I also live stream on Twitch, so you can click the link and find me over there. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.